That's uh, you, you mentioned that word trowel, and that remind me of our our pooper scooper episode. So, <laughs> so you know, if, if these an- anti gunners, if if they would just beat their firearms into shovels to bury the excrement of their bad theology, that would be fantastic. <laughs> And right there is the opening line for the show. (laughs) Bringing you law, gospel, and guns. This is Armed Lutheran Radio. Hi folks, welcome to Armed Lutheran Radio, a show about guns, hunting, competitive shooting, the natural right of self-defense, and what God's Word says about the issues surrounding gun rights and gun ownership. I'm your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, and this is episode number 235. Thank you so much for making Armed Lutheran Radio a part of your week again this week. For those of you who are new, uh, joining us for the first time, thank you for for joining us. Glad you checked us out. Hope you'll stick around. Um, Welcome aboard. We, we are not, you're going to find that we are not your typical pro-gun podcast. We're not your typical religion podcast either. We kind of mix the two. We discuss guns and hunting and competitive shooting and self-defense and most importantly, God's word and uh, what it has to say about the ethical and moral issues surrounding guns and gun ownership and gun rights. For those of you who have not visited with us before, what we're doing t- uh, today is what we call our Clinging to God and Gun show. Every other week, we rotate our format. Last week was our variety show format where we bring you content from my uh, amazing cast, Mia Anstein, who is our resident hunting guide, Sergeant Bill Sylvia, our master class competitive shooter, and Pastor John Bennett from St. John Lutheran Church in Willow Creek, Minnesota, who um, joins me every other week to discuss uh, uh, gun rights from a Christian perspective, and during our variety show weeks, he pontificates about um, society and culture and theology and, and gun rights and that sort of stuff. So um, Pastor Bennett is was supposed to be with me this week. Unfortunately, he is under the weather. So please keep him and his family uh, and his congregation in your prayers. That means I'm riding solo today. I'm holding down the fort. Uh, You get a full dose of me today, Uh, so I apologize for that. But first, I do want to thank the people who make this show possible. People like Kurt from Rialto, California, Stephen B., Edwin from Round Lake Beach, Illinois, our seminarian Jim, Jackie from Federal Way, Washington, Donnie from White Bear Lake, Minnesota, and Sam from Mississippi. Thank you all so much for your support. Um, you know, St. Paul tells us in the Bible that that um, the love of money is the root of all evil. And here at Armed Lutheran Radio, we are ready to help you um, with this idolatry by allowing you to send us some of your money. Seriously, though, uh, Armed Lutheran Radio is a listener-funded podcast. We don't have any advertising. We don't have any sponsors. So that means we are funded by the men and women who are members of what we lovingly call the Reformation Gun Club. These are the people who value what we do, put their money where their mouth is, help us pay the bills and continue to grow and improve the show. And I thank all of them so much for their support. Members get access to our exclusive website, which has recently been updated. Um, Hundreds of hours. I was trying to think. I I counted up all the stuff this uh, last week because I recently moved everything to our new hosting service and to the new website. Tons and tons, hundreds of hours of exclusive content. And I've still got hundreds of hours more that hasn't been that I need to edit and post. Um, You get your own RSS feed so that you can import that into your favorite podcast player. And then you'll see the Reformation Gun Club just like another podcast. we get new content that we post every week. We have invitations for monthly online hangouts. And um, yeah, we'll talk about that in just a moment. And you get in, invites to that, some cool discounts and some cool swag. Come check it all out. Go. I, I can't explain it all here. It would take me the entire show and you would get bored and tune out. So visit the website gunclub.armedlutheran.us. Check out all the benefits. 
uh, for yourself. And uh, I hope you'll uh, consider joining all those awesome people and uh, supporting the show as we move forward. Look for a link to the Reformation Gun Club in the show notes for this or any of our previous episodes. All right, before we get started, I want to do uh, just a, a little bit of house cle- cleaning here. House cleaning, housekeeping. Uh, for those who don't know, I have been living in temporary housing for the past three months following extensive water damage to my home, which happened back in June when we were visiting family in North Carolina. This coming week, we're going to get to return to Casa Armed Lutheran and get our lives back. Um, It all starts tomorrow with some plumbing work and the return of our furniture. So there, that light that I mentioned previously, that's at the end of the, we see at the end of the tunnel, it's not a train. It's actually the end of the tunnel and will be, uh, things are going to start to finally get back to normal. Uh, So thank you so much uh, for everyone who's offered your thoughts and prayers. Um, It's been a crazy time. The last Um, the last week has been kind of crazy trying to get all of my projects and, and, uh, tickets and things at work taken care of so that I can go on vacation next week and use that vacation to move back into my house. Um, so that being said, there's not going to be a September Reformation Gun Club hangout. It's just been way too crazy to, to make it happen, but We are going to have a show next week, and we will have an October hangout for members of the Reformation Gun Club, hopefully shortly thereafter. So um, uh, look for that, and uh, come join us. Thank you all for your thoughts and prayers again, and for all the well wishes. We really do appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to getting um, right back to uh, getting back to normal. Um, Another note... I am in the the final stages of editing the Gun Rights Apologetics book, which is coming out in time for Christmas gift giving. We've got some really awesome articles from Lutheran pastors around the country. Uh, And uh, for those of you who have pre-ordered, I'll be reaching out to you to get your feedback on a title, because one of the things that everybody who pre-orders gets a chance to have a say in what the... um, in what the title of the book will be. I'll be reaching out for that. And if you would like to pre-order a copy that's still available, look for a link in the show notes for today's show. Okay, now that all of that is out of the way, I wanted to discuss something this week that's been on my mind. Uh, A couple of incidents recently that I suspect this is going to rustle some jimmies because this one's directed at us. This isn't directed at the left. This is directed at us, the conservative right, and especially right-leaning media. You know, whenever we see a police shooting or a case of police, what we what the media calls police brutality in the news, and that seems to be all the news wants to talk about lately, um, there's a good bit of hyperventilating on both sides, and the media is really quick to stoke fire up people's emotions before we know all the facts. And many times, once the facts do finally come out, they're completely different from the facts that were presented at the time the incident happened. Um, John Correa at Active Self-Protection has this idea, something he calls the 72-hour rule, where you wait 72 hours before commenting on anything like this. And I think it's a good rule. It's a good rule of thumb that I wish we would follow, and I wish the mainstream media and the right-wing media would follow as well. Let's let's take a couple of examples. Um, Breonna Taylor, of course, is the most recent. We've we were told that she was she was an aspiring nurse, and that she there was a no-knock raid at her house, or they went to the wrong house. There was another. Uh, another thing that, that we heard, she was shot while she was still asleep in bed because the police just opened fire on her apartment. Well, what we've discovered is no, her apartment was actually specifically named in a warrant for a raid. It wasn't a no knock raid. They did knock. They did announce themselves. Um, contrary to what the original, uh, the original narrative was, police did announce themselves. They did knock. 
And when the door, they kicked in the door, um, they assumed nobody was home and the boyfriend started shooting and they fired back. And unfortunately, Breonna Taylor was hit. She wasn't lying in bed when she was hit either. She was in the hallway with the boyfriend. So this week, of course, Louisville has gone crazy because the grand jury, the the district attorney did not uh, file charges against the police officers involved, except for one who who um, apparently fired negligently into a neighboring uh, and whose whose shot struck in a neighboring apartment. So, of course, everybody's up in arms because all of those cops obviously should were racists and obviously they should be strung up uh, because um, they violated Breonna Taylor's rights. Again, once the uh, information came out, the, the truth looks very different from what we thought. Let's take the case of George Floyd. Now, I was even of a, a certain opinion. I'm still a, a, of the opinion that he was mistreated in terms of the way. I don't like that particular hold. And I think the way that they were uh, restraining him, the amount of time they spent restraining him was improper. I don't think it was a ra- an action of or an act of racism either, um, but we were told early on he was minding his own business or he was he was hassled, he was ultimately killed because he was passing bad checks. Not the case at all. Um, he was a, he's a godly man. He's a family man. He's not violent. He was just killed by a bunch of racist white cops. Well, turns out that's not true either. Um, if you watch the the uh, video from the the uh, badge cam video from the officers, the cops were actually pretty polite and a, and a lot more respectful and patient than I would have expected. Floyd was acting weird. Turns out we know now that he was high on I think meth and fentanyl. Um, he resisted arrest. He was complaining about not being able to breathe long before the police officers uh, put his knee in his back. He actually was complaining about when they were trying to put him in the police car that he couldn't go in the police car because he couldn't breathe. And then once they, then there was a struggle that ensued. It's completely different, completely different facts from what we were originally presented. And because the original presentation of the facts were so inflammatory, just like with the Breonna Taylor case, we got riots and looting and arson. Oh yeah. And Far from being racist, three of the four cops who were involved in George Floyd's arrest were actually persons of color. But we'll we'll leave that for another time. Let's look at Jacob Blake next. Uh, a godly family man, hassled by racist cops. He was unarmed. He didn't resist, and was shot in the back with his kids in his car. Well, it turns out that's not exactly the case. He um, he had returned to the home of a woman that he sexually assaulted. He took her car keys. The woman called police. Police arrived. Blake resisted. He was tased. That didn't work. He had a knife, as it turned out. He attempted to get into the car. Yes, the kids were in the car. But here's the new information that just came out this week. The police officer who fired on Mr. Blake did so because he heard the woman yelling that Blake had her keys and her kid. So, fearing that this guy was going to get in the car, and drive off with and potentially kidnap a child, he fired. He was afraid that those children were going to be kidnapped. Now, whether that's correct, whether he misheard, we don't know. But again, this isn't an act of racism. This, at the, at the worst, this is a case of maybe an overreaction by the cop, and I'm not even going to make that claim. But everything about this narrative is wrong. Everything we were originally told is wrong, except for the fact that he was shot seven times in the back. We do know that's true. But all the other, all the other stuff about how he was treated and the motive behind his treatment is completely false. And we've seen the, the looting and the riots and athletes putting this piece of crap's name on their, on their helmets. No completely different. We dismiss a lot of these cases of of police force or police use of force 
saying things like, well, you know, he resisted arrest. He's a criminal. He got what was coming to him. I see a, a rush to sort of judge on our side and dismiss charges of police brutality on their face because of this, what we think is going on. Again, initial reactions to some of these, these cases. And we sort of dismiss them because we think, well, that's what you get, right? That's what happens when you resist. And it's true. You resist a lawful order from police and it's not going to turn out very well for you. So let's look at another incident that just happened this week where things are a little bit different. And let's look at the responses. You've probably seen this story. This is part of a story from CBS News. A woman attending a school football game in Ohio was tased and arrested after she refused to put on a mask. Logan Police Department said in a press release on Thursday, video captured by another adult at the game shows the woman struggling with an officer on the metal bleachers as he tries to handcuff her. That's when he uses a taser on her, shocking onlookers. Okay, so what has been the response from conservative media on this? We're shocked that police would use a taser on a woman for not wearing a mask. Look at some of these headlines. New York Post, woman tased, arrested for not wearing mask at football game. New York Daily News, see it, police use taser on woman for refusing to wear mask at Ohio football game. WayneDupree.com, Ohio woman tased and arrested for not wearing a mask at son's outdoor grade school football game. Ed Morrissey, whom I generally respect, at HotAir.com. Video of the day, woman tasered for not wearing a mask at an outdoor middle school football game. PJ Media. Now, these are all on the right, notice. Ohio woman arrest, uh, arrested and tased after police demand she wear mask at Suns outdoor football game. The Ohio Star, which interestingly claims in their subtitle or their subheading, leading the way in news and education, only to give you this gem of a headline. Ohio mom tased and arrested for not wearing mask at a game. Townhall.com. Mother with asthma tased and arrested for not wearing a mask. This one is ironic. iHeartIntelligence.com. I have no idea what their political leaning is. I just found it funny that a website that's called iHeartIntelligence.com posted this unintelligent title. Woman is tased for not wearing a face mask at a school football game. Uh, unsurprisingly, Breitbart, Ohio mother tased, arrested for not wearing mask at a football game, and Red State. Watch, mother tased and arrested for not wearing a mask at son's middle school football game. So, and naturally, right-wing media, so, uh, social media is up in arms over this. It's a travesty. Except we didn't wait 72 hours to find out what really happened. Because the story fits our narratives and our biases about government overreach and mask mandates. Right-wing media has done exactly what we decry about the left-wing media. They're stirring the pot. Here's the press release from the Logan, Ohio Police Department. Listen to this. On September 23rd, at approximately 5.30 p.m., school resource officer Chris Smith was working at a, a special duty detail at the Logan High School Stadium for the 7th and 8th grade football games. The special duty assignment was requested by the Logan Hocking School District to help ensure safety of fans and athletes during their inside and outside sporting events. One of the duties assigned is to ensure that fans are complying with CDC, Ohio Health Department, Ohio Athletic Association, and the Logan Hocking School District policy, rules, and guidelines. One of those guidelines mandated by the Logan Hocking School District is that all spectators must wear a mask while on school property. Set aside what you think, breaking away from the, the press release here, set aside what you think, your personal view of mask mandates, and think about that for just a moment. This was school policy. Officer Smith was walking in the stadium and observed a female sitting in the stands without a mask. He approached the female and advised her she needed to put her mask on as required by school policy. The female advised that she had asthma and was not going to put it on. 
Officer Smith advised the female several times that she needed to put her mask on, and if she did not, she would be asked to leave and would have to wait outside. The female continually refused his request, and Officer Smith advised her that if she refused to leave, she would be cited for trespassing and escorted off the property. After several attempts to get her to leave, Officer Smith advised her she was under arrest for criminal trespassing and asked her to place her hands behind her back multiple times, and she refused. Officer Smith attempted to place her hands behind her back, and the female began resisting by pulling away from the officer, and another female began interfering with the arrest. Very stupid. Don't interfere with an arrest attempt, you know, when a police officer is attempting to arrest someone, generally not a good idea to try to interfere with that. Officer Smith advised her to comply or he would deploy his taser if she did not stop resisting. She continued to resist and Officer Smith placed his taser on her shoulder area and drive stunned her once. So this is not shooting the darts out, right? This is not firing the darts out into you and, you know, where you do the face plant thing because all of your, your um, muscles tense up. This is what they call drive, a drive stun, where it basically just gives you a zap. He was able to successfully, uh, and that got her attention. Yep, I'm serious. This is what the police officer is saying. I'm serious here. Stop resisting. He was able to successfully handcuff the female at that time. Smart move on her part. An additional officer arrived and assisted in walking the female out of the stadium. She continued to try to pull away from the officers, not learning her lesson, while being escorted out of the stadium and had to be placed into the cruiser. She was later identified as Alicia Kitts. She was charged with criminal trespassing and released at the scene. She was not taken to jail. Additional charges are pending on Mrs. Kitts and another female subject involved in the incident. That would be the idiot who tried to intervene. It's important to note that the female was not arrested for failing to wear a mask. She was asked to leave the premises for continually violating school policy. Once she refused to leave the premises, she was advised she was under arrest for criminal trespassing. She resisted arrest, which, which led to the use of force. This is an unfortunate incident for everyone involved. The incident remains under investigation. There ends the press release. So set aside your opinion of masks for a moment. OK, I hate mask mandates. I hate them myself. We've made that abundantly clear on the show. However, if you go into an establishment or into a place like a school where the policy is that you have to wear a mask, that's the requirement. You do it. You wear the mask or you go somewhere else. It's like gun free zones. Very similar. Right. I hate those, too. But if they're if they're upheld by law, if they're enforced by law, like here in Texas with our 30 out six and 30 out seven signs, you obey because that's what, that's what good citizens do. The other thing, you don't violate the business's uh, policies or the establishment's policies, the school's policies to make a point by carrying a gun into that place where there's a no gun sign. It's just stupid. And I've heard people respond to that by saying, well, it's not against the law, so it's just a sign. It's not like they're going to arrest me. Well, yeah, that's true. They're not going to arrest you for carrying a gun. They're going to carry. They're going to arrest you, arrest you if you refuse to leave. They're going to ask you to leave the premises because you're carrying a gun in violation of the company policy. At which point, a good citizen is going to turn around and walk out. If you see the sign in the first place, you're going to take your business somewhere else. But if you think that my rights is so important that you're going to trespass, you're going to get what's coming to you. And that may be that they ask you to leave. And when you refuse, you are trespassing. And that's what happened here with Mrs. Kitts. So no, the woman was not arrested or tased for not wearing a mask. She was asked to wear a mask. She refused. She was asked to leave if she would not put the mask on. She refused. She was told to leave. That's an, a lawful order from a law enforcement officer. And she refused. And when they attempted to arrest her, she resisted. And she's been charged with criminal trespassing, which is exactly correct. So let's mix things up here just to make things more uncomfortable, shall we? 
Imagine this guy, this was a black guy. Imagine this was a black man sitting in the, in the stands and refusing to wear a mask, then refused to leave, then resisted an officer and had to be tased. What would your reaction be? Would it be any different? Now, I'm not saying it would be. What I'm saying is that when these kinds of incidents happen, we probably should examine our initial reaction to them and decide if it's rational, if it's right. We need to stop getting our emotions caught up in these things. And that's the problem that we see in a lot of these news stories that lead to all, all the riots and all the looting and all the protest is that people aren't using their brains. They're allowing their mo- emotions to overrule it. And then when later the facts come out, and their reactions look stupid. This is no different. This was the same thing. And if you can change the races of the people involved and your reaction's different, then there's a problem there that you probably should pray about and repent for. It's funny how we're all blue lives matter when it comes to police interactions with the black community, but as soon as the police enforce a law that's related to mask mandates, we're tearing our clothes and pulling our hair out and screaming uh, tyranny and government overreach. That, my friends, is hypocrisy. And we're really quick to point the bony finger of indignation at the left when they play this game. Politicians who say one thing about a particular policy and then years later they change their positions on it because it's politically advantageous for them. or we get upset when you know the sensationalism of the of the mainstream media when they and we talk about how irresponsible they are because they're fanning the flames and they're encouraging people to go out and and protest and riot and loot when they don't have all the facts we get upset about that stuff but guess what we do it too all too often we here on the we on the right do the exact same thing We need to take the log out of our eyes so that we can see clearly the speck in our neighbor's eye. All right, that's what's been on my mind this week. And that's going to do it for me. I know this has been a different, uh, kind of a different show, a little bit shorter than usual. Again, it's been a crazy week trying to prepare to get moved back into my house. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Uh, visit our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback. Leave us a voice message, a voicemail, or an email. I'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, to respond to them on the show. Um, we'll be recording next week from the uh, from the home studio instead of sitting in the front seat of my car. So um, be sure to tune in again next week. Thank you for listening today. Our whole cast, Lord willing, again, pray for Pastor Bennett as he recovers from his illness. Uh, Hopefully everybody will be back next week for another variety show. Until then, keep shooting, keep praying. We'll talk to you next time. For show notes, be sure to visit our website at www.armedlutheran.us. Check out the Facebook page, The Armed Lutheran, or join our Facebook group, Fans of Armed Lutheran Radio. If you like what you hear, please leave us a comment on our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback or a review on iTunes and let us know what you think. Thank you for listening to Armed Lutheran Radio, a member of the Self-Defense Radio Network.